Hello and welcome to the Geek Reek Mix podcast. Uh, I hope everyone's doing all right out there. Coronavirus special edition. Coronavirus a special edition. And we just want to say, you know, this is not a time to be super scared, just kind of cautious. And to remind everyone that even if you think you're not going to get really sick, that doesn't mean someone else might not con- contract it from you and get more sick. Like babies and old people and immunocompromised people. Because uh, for a lot of people out there with compromised immune systems, this is much more difficult. Yeah. This is so. I think they're saying, like, kids and babies actually don't get very bad symptoms. Oh, okay. It's, most, it's mostly, like, older and immunocompromised people that you have to be really careful about. And, I mean, we should always be taking precautions anyway, but now I think it's good to be, like, more aware um, and, like, you know, the so- whole social distancing thing is, like, you know, even if you're not worried about going somewhere and, like, getting sick, it's also just, like, putting less people. Like, if you get sick and you end up having to go to the hospital, you might end up using resources for somebody who also needs those resources. Mm-hmm. So, like, the less the less you do that, you know, the more it might help. And Don't you- feel guilty if you get sick, though. No, definitely don't feel not. guilty. Just do your best to stop the spread of it. Um, I think I've seen a few things from doctors saying that most people are going to get it, but they're trying to slow down the amount of people getting infected at one time so hospitals don't get overwhelmed. That's a main part of it. It's not that they think everyone's going to die. It's just that if everyone gets sick at the same time, it would be really hard to take care of everyone. Mm-hmm. And like... I saw this tweet going around this morning, actually, that was talking about how, like, you may never know if the things that you did helped, but you should just, you know, think about the fact that, like, you doing little things like washing your hands or, like, not going places if you're not going feeling feeling well, as long as that's, like, doable for you, like, that can really help people and you may never know, like, the impact of it, but you should do it anyway. Yeah, so right now, let's all think about how we're protecting everybody with our actions, but don't have anxiety about it. Just, you know, continue to live your life as long as you're allowed. Mm-hmm. We are... And I also just want to say that for anybody who is, like, living in a situation, like, we're not currently quarantined right now or anything. Like, I'm working from home because I'm lucky enough to have, like, an office job that lets me do that. I know that a lot of people, like, they don't have that option either because of, like, they work in the service industry, their job doesn't allow it, or, you know... Like, there's a lot of, like, money situations that people also have to think of right now. Um, that's obviously, like, it makes it a lot more difficult, um, and I don't think there's any, like, one blanket piece of advice that we could give people, aside from to just, like, try your best to take care of yourself, and we are sending positive vibes your way to deal with it Mm -hmm. however is best for your situation, you know? Yeah, so I just want everyone to know that everything's gonna be mostly okay, and to not freak out, just be cautious, Mm -hmm. you know? On a positive note, Pokemon... So there's a bunch of, like... If you just, like, look online, there's, like, a whole bunch of stories about, like, coronavirus stuff. Like, even impacting, like, the gaming world, which is just kind of wild. Um, But this one was actually, like, a piece of good news, which is that Pokemon Go temporarily won't make you leave the house due to the coronavirus. So you can actually enjoy playing this game which typically involves you, like, running around outside and, like, doing all sorts of stuff and going places. Introverts, rise up. Now is our time. Now is the time. Now is the time to take over. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So, and I know that, you know, there's plenty of other games that are coming out soon. Luckily, um, you know, there's been, like, a bunch of, like, movie cancellations or, like, pushing of the release dates of movies because... um, theaters either they don't want to have like reduced like numbers and stuff but Mm -hmm. games can still come out yeah as long as it's okay for everybody to still be working on them yeah i was going to go get the physical version of animal crossing now i'm just not i i have the ability to download it i have the bandwidth and the space on my sd card 
I'm just gonna make that choice not to do it. Mm-hmm. Even though I really want it, but nope, it's okay. Mm-hmm. It's an unnecessary thing. So, um, I feel like you know a lot of people are gonna have the chance to have a good time at home. Yeah. So they're in temporarily. Uh, Niantic is temporarily changing various mechanics. They're prioritizing updates to Pokemon Go features and experience that can be enjoyed in individual settings. So they're increasing habitats so that trainers can see more monsters nearby while playing closer to home. Um, incense packs are going on a discount, and when they're active, they'll last for an hour. Incubators, which ask players to accrue like steps to hatch eggs, will be more effective, so you can hatch eggs twice as fast, which means that you don't have to like walk 20 miles to hatch a fucking egg. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Poke now you just have to walk in circles in your, <laughs> I know, in walk your in apartment. <laughs> and then um, they're dropping Pokestops are dropping gifts with more frequency. All these changes are in effect immediately and will continue until further notice. Um, they've had to cancel. There was like a community event that they had coming up too. I know that one of my friends was planning on going to one of the little like fests mm -hmm. so they've had to cancel those but I'm actually really happy that they're like making all these updates to the game so that people can like still play it because I know that when I was obsessed with this game like when the weather got cold and it was like impossible to go outside and play it it sucked mm -hmm. so much you know because it's like so much of that game is based on being outside and I was like cool it is 20 below like, you can't <laughs> expect me to be, like, walking around, like, playing with my phone when it's this cold. Hardcore gamers only, sorry. <sighs> if you're... Now's the time to actually get ahead. Go outside. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go outside. Um, in, like, big cancellation news... Do you want to go to the next oh, one? Yeah. Uh, E3 2020 has been canceled. Um... I think it was a responsible choice, and I th I've seen a lot of people speculate, including Laura K. Buzz slash Laura K. Friend Dale. of the show. Friend of the show and our <laughs> obsession. Every day we were like, did you see what Laura said? It was so amazing. She's so smart. We actually go to each other, too. And we're like, hey, did you see what Laura tweeted earlier? Hey, did you see what she said? Yeah, that, that was so smart. <laughs> oh, my God. Did I tell you? I was actually talking to somebody, like, not us, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, like, my friend wrote an article about blah, 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 and they were like, oh, I think I saw that, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, well, she's my friend. So. Yeah, we're friends, so, like, we're part of the elite. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, she was speculating about how it might just move all streaming anyway because, like, so many companies have been doing, like, the direct type, mm -hmm. like, digital like, their own type of thing instead of ha all coming to this giant expo. It's interesting because I remember E3 used to not be an expo for gamers specifically. It was for industry leaders. Yeah. So I wonder if maybe E3, if it survives, is going to reformat itself to be a much more private event. A more in private just for the people in the industry, not oh, to you showcase mean like, to people. Oh. Because it used to, like, a lot of complaints coming from people at E3 are like, there's too many people here. Like, this used to be just a display of all the different technologies for gaming and mm -hmm. other things. Um, but now it's uh, kind of like a Comic-Con of sorts. Yeah. And it wasn't really designed to be like that. So I wonder if E3 is going to either reformat or a different conference is going to come up that's going to be specifically for uh, businesses showing their technology to other businesses. I was actually thinking that E3 would go the other way and just become, like, instead of having one thing... All the places just do their own live streamed things and that way like everyone can participate not participate but like watch mm -hmm. kind of like how like the game awards like yeah it's for like industry people but like the mm -hmm. live stream is such like a big thing that like every like a lot of people watch it you know mm -hmm. yeah um, and I think not just with e3 but like with a lot of these like you know working from home and you know, all these other conferences that are getting changed to, like, live stream stuff, like, as companies figure out that, like, hey, 
we actually have like the technology to like make this mm -hmm. remote more companies maybe will decide to do stuff like that rather than like fly everybody to one place yeah you know i think uh i think there's value in showing tech demos and stuff but we're just gonna have to figure this out so yeah <coughs> that's not coronavirus i'm just clearing my throat you can't catch it through the web po through a podcast it's fine but, okay. So a funny coronavirus story. Yeah. Well, last coronavirus story. So. Yeah. Uh, coronavirus and the NBA, NBA <laughs> coronavirus and the NBA suspended season caused NBA 2K20 to crash. So what happened is that NBA 2K20 was trying to get the information from the ongoing tournament, but the tournament no longer exists, so it crashes the game. Yeah, so basically NBA 2K20 uh, pulls stats from, like, the season, like, mm -hmm. the games as and, like, the players that's actually ongoing. Um, but because players aren't playing any games right now uh, and the season is suspended, the game wasn't able to pull any of the current stats, and so it crashed, which is, like, that's such a... I mean, we, we like it when things do make other things happen. Well, it's like, it's so funny because you would never, this is like one of those like weird side Yeah, effects. nobody would have programmed to like a way out of it because they, of course. Cause, because who would think that the, that the NBA would just stop playing? <laughs> yeah. That's not really. Yeah, like at no point, most, even during times like after 9-11, all the everything was still going yeah they missed like one game we're both old enough to well, remember that but I, I, I yeah I'm, i was gonna even like more recently like the boston bombing like mm -hmm. all the sports games like in boston like i you know I, they took maybe like one day off mm -hmm. if that mm -hmm. and then they just resumed play yeah because i think the attitude is usually like that their um sports can be can be a venue for like solidarity and for people to kind of like come together and yeah and listen and and but now we can't now we can't wait we can get come together digitally so yeah everybody leave a nice remember everybody don't be toxic in this time once a day everyone has to leave a nice comment to someone else's stuff mm -hmm. just <laughs> that's everyone's homework once a day leave a nice comment doesn't have to be to us. We love it though, but just to anybody, leave mm -hmm. nice comments. Spread and the love without touching anybody. Don't touch anyone. Just leave <laughs> nice comments on other people's stuff, just so everybody can have like a nice little thing. They're like, oh, like this nice thing happened today. Yeah. So especially just, if they're in Italy. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, my friend's in Italy, and he has like some neurological thing in his neck, and. Uh, he has to get Botox once a month, mm -hmm. but now he might have a hard time getting that. Oh yeah, because like, uh, you know, I was actually when when things first started getting um, worse in China, they were talking about how like one of those other like random side effects was that like elective surgeries like plummeted because nobody wanted to go to a hospital mm -hmm. um, to get an elective surgery. Mm -hmm. And so like medical device companies were being adversely affected, mm -hmm. which is like, it's this like weird, like knock on effect of like all these, you know, things kind of string together and they end up affecting industries in ways that you can't even project. Yeah. So but again, most of us are going to have the virus and we're going to get sick and that's okay. Do you really think it's, like, most? Because, like, swine flu was, like, 20% of the U.S. population. Oh, I thought it was 60, like you said. 60 million people. Oh. Which is 20% of the U.S. population. Stacy's a, a swine virus veteran. Swine, yeah, swine, I'm a swine flu veteran. Yeah, she's a swine flu veteran. Yeah. You were in quarantine. That was cool. I feel like, would they enjoy hearing that story? Or, like, would that be too scary? No, it wouldn't be scary because you came out just fine. Yeah. I, I painted... Uh, I remember you were, like, upset that you couldn't wear makeup over your mask, so we drew it. Yeah, so to add a little bit of context, this actually happened while, when we first met in residential treatment, and so this was, like, at the, towards the, like, middle, I think, of the swine flu thing, or yeah, towards we the end. Yeah, we were so totally checked out for swine flu, so we can't, 
Yeah. Like, we can't compare it. We're like, uh, I don't know, we were locked in a yeah. facility. <laughs> I don't, I, I honestly, like, I don't remember anything about, like, the hubbub leading up to it. But also, I think that swine flu was a lot more, like, long, like, that, la- like, that, uh, that pandemic officially lasted for two years. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that the... It wasn't as contagious as this one, though. Yeah. So what happened was, is that we were in residential treatment. Who knows where I got it from? I think that what probably happened is that somebody who was working there, not on purpose, obviously, mm-hmm. because it's like I wasn't allowed to leave, so I probably caught yeah, it. Yeah, we were all locked in. We are all locked in. So, like, most likely somebody who um, worked at the facility we were at either had gotten in contact with somebody who was sick or was sick themselves and came to work and probably got me sick. Um so then I was quarantined by myself in a tiny room. Wait, no, okay. To be fair, she got the room everyone wanted. <laughs> yeah. So she got the cool room. I got the cool room. Well, it was still very small. It was like this big. Yeah, it wasn't very big, but that was the room everyone wanted. <laughs> yeah, that was the room everyone wanted because everyone had everyone had like three roommates basically. <laughs> I actually ended up liking it, and then when it was my turn to like have seniority, I was like, no. That's, I'd be too lonely. Yeah, so then I was by myself in the room. All my meals were delivered to me in the room, so I just had to, like, sit there. To be honest, I don't remember too much of it because I know that I had a really bad fever. And so, like, I do remember very distinctly, like, hallucinating for a lot of it and then, like, coming in. But to be fair, you were immunocompromised. Yeah, I was definitely immunocompromised at the time. Um, but I remember them, like, coming in and doing my blood work, and it all just felt very, like, what's happening? We were all getting blood work at the time, so I'm trying to make everyone feel like, yeah, Yeah. I feel like it was fine. Well, you were sick, and I don't want to invalidate that, but you lived. Yeah, but I lived. Um, yeah, and you drew, like, lips on my mask. Well, you were, like, so upset. (laughs) Well, because I was, well, because I was by myself, and, like, I couldn't, like... They wouldn't let me talk to anybody unless I literally, like, sat in, like, on the other side of the doorway with, like, a mask on. So people would just, like, come and, like, sit outside my door, remember, and, like, yeah. talk to me. Um, but otherwise, I was just by myself all the time, and, like, everybody else was off doing group activities, so I just had to, like, chill and be sick. I remember everyone was, like, really jealous of you, though. <laughs> I mean, I don't remember, though, because they weren't telling me that. I didn't get to talk to them. <laughs> Everyone was so jealous. <laughs> like, how come she gets to eat over there? And they're like, because she has swine flu. She can't come in here. Yeah, like, and, like, yeah, I remember eating, like, applesauce. Lots of applesauce. <laughs> um, and um, what else? I remember, like, it was just, I remember, like, there was, like, nothing in the room. And, like... I was, like, not feeling well, so I, like, didn't want to do anything anyway, so I just kind of was like, blah. <laughs> yeah. Aww. But it was only for a couple days. Like, it was, I think, like, two or three days that I was actually, like, quarantined, and then mm-hmm. they decided that I was still sick, but I wasn't contagious anymore. Mm-hmm. So, this, um, yeah. And obviously, it's, it's different if, like, how this one like, the coronavirus reacts with you, but I guess just, you know, take care of yourself. Yeah. We, Stacy survived the last one. She was fine. <laughs> the culling? The, the last culling. So, <laughs> everything was going to be fine. See, that's, like, the extent of how, like, that's the extent of mm-hmm. what it would be like. Like, we were in residential treatment, so they were even more, like extreme about it yeah well and so I, that's like it, how bad it would be you know it's, what, it's not that bad you know also it, another thing to consider too is that like when you're dealing with like a pandemic or something that's contagious a successful like response looks like an overreaction because then it doesn't spread and so people are like wow like did we really need to do all that and it's like well no because the whole idea is to prevent spread mm-hmm. it's not to like wait until it's so bad that you then start because like in movies and everything right the response is always so delayed that like shit gets really bad Mm -hmm. and then they try to do stuff you know Mm -hmm. like watching the movie contagion everyone was like doubting like oh yeah but it's good that they do it so early you know 
all the countries tried their best to do it early. And this is actually, I feel like, doing a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. I Yeah, I would feel a little bit better if the U.S. was a little more up on their testing. But, but you know, can't control what the U.S. does, but we can control ourselves. But we can bitch about it. Yeah. Okay, so... <laughs> um. The Last of Us is going to be developed into an HBO show, and the show is getting the music. So, like, have you noticed they're trying really hard to find a new gritty show to replace Game of Thrones? Yes, they've been doing like every single fantasy show, just one, ep just one season, being like, which one's going to catch on? Mm -hmm. And it's sad because The Watchmen could have been cool, but oh wait, did they cancel it? Yeah. And it, I feel bad because the Dr. Manhattan makeup is so bad. It's so bad. It's I didn't awful. even know it was canceled. I heard, like, that they did a couple cool things with it, but that's it? I haven't watched any of it, so, like, take my opinion as that. But the makeup for Dr. Manhattan is, like, really terrible. Do you want to pull it up? Just Dr. Manhattan Watchmen. Oh, HBO. Yeah. Like, it's just huh. him in blue paint. They don't, like, he only glows when he's doing powers. Uh, hmm. And also, they put a bald cap on him, which makes his head look kind of big. And it's like, why do this to him? What does he look like in the comics? Um, he looks like a dork still. <laughs> but here's this versus the movie. Oh, and also, you don't get to see his dingling, so it's like, what the hell? So what's the point? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I think it's mostly just like because they. It seems like they put a bald cap on him, and it makes him his head look weird. And also, they just put blue makeup on him instead of having at least a CGI glow, which yeah. is kind of his like main thing. I think <laughs> you know. So. Not like I'm saying that, like, whenever you adapt a comic, you have to, like, change a bunch of things. But I think it's always good to kind of think about, like, what translates to the medium that you're going to be bringing it to. It's the same thing if you were to t go the other way, take a TV show and make it into a comic. Like, you wouldn't do it frame for frame exactly the same way. You might make changes. Not that, I'm not saying this is good. Yeah. I'm saying what they should have done is thought about, like, how do we take the idea, mm -hmm. like, the the feeling that his character evokes and translate that to TV. You know, you know? what I, I, it kind of bothers me is that, um... He just looks like an extra for Blue Man Group. Outside of, like, the adaption of the HBO series, which I haven't watched, so keep that in mind for my opinion, is that, like, I see a lot of comics and stuff where they're trying to make the Watchmen kind of on the same level as Superman and stuff, where really it was written by... A really a man who was very anti society <laughs> and stuff. wasn't he the guy that was like super anti superhero and his whole point was that like you shouldn't um like that you, that you shouldn't you sh worship them yeah yeah um, kind of like the boys it's kind of well the boys was heavily influenced by the Watchmen so yeah. the Watchmen I'm sure you know this but I'm explaining to the audience was made and that was like revolutionary to have these superheroes who were so deeply flawed and mm -hmm. how like basically being a superhero corrupted them so that they couldn't be superheroes and that there was really no place for them in mm -hmm. the world and the boys is great by the way if you haven't watched that that's very good it is very like if you if you want content warnings i would look them up yeah though. definitely look up content look up warnings content for warnings. that because like, if you're sensitive to certain subjects, like, it can be really yeah. stressful. Um, I wasn't bothered by anything, but I always, like, I don't know. Whenever I write, like, reviews on Goodreads and stuff, like, for books, I always try to be, like, either include content warnings or just say, like, or if there's, like, a bunch of stuff, I'll just be, like, look up content warnings, you know? Because, mm -hmm. like, while most, ev most things don't, like, bother me, I also understand that, like, everyone's different and mm -hmm. like also sometimes I feel like if you know about it in advance that makes it less jarring mm -hmm. you know I don't know I just feel like HBO is trying too hard to like shoot a bunch of arrows and the reason why Game of Thrones did so well is because they had people who really cared about the project at least in the first season so 
Um, and then they translated the source material to the show really well until the fourth season, and then they ran out of material and started trying to write for themselves, and it went trash. Well, I thought that What's His Face, um, George R. R. Martin was still, yeah. he was still overseeing all of like the scripts and stuff. Cause he was gave, he really though? I don't know. I mean, that that's what they said. Yeah. He also Not, said he was so glad that the show did poorly, so people leave him alone now. <laughs> So, I was kind of wondering if, like, what do they have for other shows that they're trying to... They have uh, The Golden Compass, but they're calling it His Dark Materials, which yes. I really enjoyed, but I have a feeling it's not going to take off. Mm -hmm. But I loved it, because HBO shows are usually like, let's have everyone fuck, and you're like, okay, I got it. I Everyone's it. having People sex. Fuck. Yeah, wait, I got it. And I feel like for us to say that. Yeah, I know. Like, even I'm exhausted. <laughs> like, that's so much sex. Um, the, his Dark Materials, I would recommend if you like a dark storyline, but that, that that's not like everyone's getting, you know, like assaulted. Like grim, Grimdark. Yeah. yeah, it's just like kids get killed. Yeah. Yay! Yay! <laughs> that's fine. Um, and there's like a polar bear nation of warriors. Fucking sweet. Yeah, it's it's like a really cool show. <laughs> um, I really like it. I like the direction it went in. So if you want a gritty show that's not edgy. Yeah, that's what it is. It's gritty, but it's not like trying hard to be edgy. No, I was saying, because I was also going to recommend that people watch Barry. Because oh, I, yeah. I watched all of season one and two over this past weekend while we were taking like a little break. Um... It's great. It's definitely, like, dark comedy. It's Bill Hader, who was on SNL, um, but he is actually, like, very believably a hitman who, like, goes to L.A. to do a hit, and then he's like, wait, maybe I want to be an actor. And him kind of, like, stumbling into trying to do this while also trying to, like, extricate himself from, like, m murder business. Here's all the shows you can be watching while you have to stay inside. Exactly. Um, there's also Avenue 5 just came out on HBO. Ooh, what's any good Netflix shows? Because that's more accessible. Um, wait, wait. I feel like I just... Oh, uh, I haven't watched season two yet, but I did enjoy season one of, um, Altered Carbon, and I know season two just came out. Um... Sabrina's always a good one. The OA, if you're into, like, weird fantasy, sci-fi. It's about this woman who disappears for seven years, and she comes back, and she let, when she disappeared, she was blind, but now that she's back, she can see, and she has all these weird scars on her body, and they keep asking her what happened, and she won't tell anybody, and so it's about her opening up and talking about what happened, but it's it's magical and has multi-universe stuff in it, so just give it a try. Yeah. It's very... Oh, watch You. You? That's a great one. The TV show You, that's a good one. That's a really good one. Uh, Castlevania, there's three seasons out now. Yep. yep. Um, what else is there? Peaky Blinders is good. I haven't seen that, but it seems cool. It's, re it's really good. Oh, there's some good cartoon ones for relaxing. The Good Place. Ooh, Netflix is going to go off the charts right now. <laughs> <laughs> There's also the sh a TV show called Hilda, which is has the same energy as, what's that show where um, they have, like, all those, oh, uh, something peaks? Gravity Falls. It has the same energy as Gravity Falls. It takes place in, like, a magical universe where, like, trolls and fairies all exist, and she's just chilling, you know, and she likes it. Also, watch Dark. Dark's a good one. Dark's really good. All right, should we uh, move forward? Yeah, let's I feel like we've given people a lot of options yes. there. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I'm, um, I'm interested to see what they do with it, but I don't, I don't know. Uh, and since everyone is going to be home for a while, here is a free game on the Epic Store. It's called Mutazion, and it's really, really fun and really relaxing. It's about a girl going to visit, I guess, her family's hometown. But the hometown also happens to be on an island where a meteor struck oh, like 50 years ago and made everyone into mutants. Mm. But you're not a mutant. 
your grandfather just like helped the mutant culture. This has like uh, what's the oh um until mm. not until dawn, oxen free vibes. Yes, yeah, it does. But it's much more chill. Nothing really bad is happening. There's just like it kind of is, but. It's mostly about connecting with all the characters. Did that and... bean just fart? Yes. Okay. It's really, in... it's so The bean cute. farts so much. They're so, <laughs> it's so cute. Like, there's so many cute little details. Oh, yeah, and your grandpa's dying. But, and, <laughs> and also. But he... nothing bad's happening. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, but your grandpa's dying, but he's teaching you how to be the next shaman of the, of the village. Mm -hmm. And that's, like, really cool. And you go out into the, into the forest and you collect different seeds and stuff and then you grow them in your garden by ma singing to the garden and it grows mm -hmm. and it's just really chill really just relaxing you make friends with all the villagers these little dudes are trying to be capitalists but they're too stupid so they mm -hmm. just have like really long dumb conversations that's isn't that kind of well the island is not doesn't have currency so it's just like these little idiots being like and that's how money works yeah okay uh -huh. but they're all like don't understand what money is mm -hmm. like most capitalists <laughs> <laughs> yeah so the island is fully tra like trade based so if if you want to live in a semi anarchistic culture commune with mutants this is your game mm-hmm uh, it's it's free on the Epic Game Store right now. Ends three nineteen, so check it out. And here's another free one on the Epic Game Store called A Short Hike. I just thought it would be nice for people to know about some free games to play mm -hmm. right now on their PC. Looks cute. If you know any other free games for people to get while they're trying to find things to do, please leave them in the comments. Yeah. Uh, Neil Gaiman reveals that the Sandman TV series will be updated for now instead of a 1980s period piece. So I actually didn't even know that Netflix is going to be doing a Sandman series. It's like the this huge like graphic novel series that I haven't even read the whole thing. I've read like the first, you know, 40 books or whatever because they're like gathered in these like giant volumes. But it's really interesting, and I don't, like, the work itself is, like, so big. I don't know how you translate that into, like, I don't know how you, I mean, I'm not, like, a TV writer, obviously, so it'll be interesting to see, like, how on earth they do that. Do it for three seasons and then cancel it when the actors ask for a raise? No, actually what Netflix does is they do it for two seasons because that's when you get high viewership numbers and then they cancel it because then it is more work. <laughs> no, I'm serious. No, they, I know. Yeah, they released, Netflix talked about that, how they... No, when, they just said it. Yeah, they said it because they crunched the numbers and they said, actually, it makes the most sense to just do a show for one or two seasons because that's when viewership numbers peak and then season three is where they tail off and so then they cancel them. So that's why they have all those shows that were, like, really cool, but they canceled them after two seasons because they decided, like, eh. They should really make it so that people know that so that you can have a wrap-up of the story. Netflix. Yeah, because, so their whole thing is that they want to get people into Netflix. Mm -hmm. So, like, when you have a new show come out, that's when you get new people to the platform mm. because they're like, oh, like, this new show, I want to see that. But then, like, after a couple seasons, that boost, like, wears off, and so then they just stop producing it. So hopefully that doesn't happen here. Well. Um. Whoop. Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, people were asking for our thoughts on Birds of Prey because we saw that a couple weekends ago. We saw that for your birthday. It Everybody was fun. say happy birthday, belated birthday to Mari. Yay! Um, it was fun. I I completely understand that this was a very focused audience, and that's okay if you don't like it. It's okay to be wrong, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, there were some people in the movie theater who were just vibing, really with, connecting heavily with. Yeah, they really like. I thought, oh yeah, Harley Quinn's cool. These people were like, Harley Quinn speaks to me on a deep level. Oh, remember what I told you though. 
Harley Quinn girls are grown up Tinkerbell girls. That's it, though. That's you it. Know, I think that's a little unfair because I think Harley Quinn girls are nicer. Hmm. Well, maybe that's they're grown up. Oh yeah. You know what though? I kind of see Harley Quinn girls as like, because I see Tinkerbell girls as like, I want everything I want, and mm-hmm. I'm also like very into mainstream stuff. While I see, this is just me like saying we are things. just talking. Yeah, we're right just now. talking. We're not making. While I see Harley Quinn you. girls as like the alternative girl who growled at people. And, like, that's valid, first of all. And she, like, growled at people, and everyone thought she was weird. And then she grew up and started her own style, and everyone's like, wait, actually, she's cool. So they're goth Tinkerbell girls. Yeah, but they're not yeah. mean. I feel well, like but that's, every... what, that's what I'm saying. Like, they're different. Ah, right. Like, it's kind of like if you're looking at it like high school cliques. You've got Tinkerbell girls, and then you've got, like, Harley Quinn girls, who are, like, the goth, like, different alternative. They hiss at people, you know. Yeah, they're energy. not afraid to, like... Be weirdos. Yeah, be weirdos. There were girls in there, like, completely vibing with this. <laughs> Just, like, they, I felt, I could feel the connection that they were having. It was so strong. <laughs> They're like, I understand. Finally, this movie is for me. This movie is for me, personally. Nobody else is here. <laughs> I'm laughing at every joke, and even some things that aren't jokes. No, I think they must have picked up on a joke because they're like, ha, I have also done that. I honestly just assumed that they were high. No, I think they were just very happy. <laughs> I didn't think they were high because I thought they were just like, yes, finally. Like, mm. you know, like when nerds will laugh at, do- at gamer jokes and they're like, yes, finally. Like, I am being validated. Mm-hmm. It was that same energy. And I, and I respected it because I think deep down... Most people are a Harley Quinn on on their most, like, impulsive level. Mm. No, I disagree. Really? Do you think most people are are Harley Quinn inside? Just deep down, she, like, represents, like, the impulse. Just, I want to break everything. No, I completely disagree. Some people are just normal. No, I don't (laughs) think they're normal. I think some people are, they would never, like, indulge that impulse. They don't. No, inside, not actually indulging it. But no, 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 but, I don't, like, I think that some people are just, like, I don't think they have that impulse, you know? They're not special, it's like, like us. Well, it's like <laughs> some people, it's like when they look at their, like, when they're given rules, they're like, oh, good, rules. Ah. You know what I mean? I see. There's a lot of people that operate within the, I'm not saying it's bad, but there's a lot of people that operate within the framework of, like, oh, yeah, like, here's my framework, it makes me happy that there are rules for, like, how to act, like, how to do well in school, how to act around authority figures, and they just feel happier when they are following the rules, Mm -hmm. and they never think to themselves, like, fuck this, Mm -hmm. you know? One thing I really liked about how they depicted her character is that I felt that she was a continuation of her base character from her origin of, you know... (laughs) Uh, Batman the Animated Series. Not, like, canonically, but just in terms of personality. Like, this is what would happen if they continued to date. Is Mm -hmm. that she would eventually realize that she can do better. Mm -hmm. And I liked that she was simultaneously very accomplished and talented, but at the same time capable of making really obvious mistakes. Because I think a lot of people are really good on certain levels and then also have flaws too and I thought that was really cool because I think sometimes when women make like I've done this where I'm like so blinded by love I guess specifically about that man I lived with for seven years then when you get out you're like wait what Mm -hmm. like why did I even deal with this yeah and I think also that it's kind of a trap to assume that like if somebody is smart that they can't make bad decisions you know or that because somebody makes bad decisions that they're not smart Mm -hmm. because like I really yeah I really enjoy that they were like no she's really smart and talented and capable it's just that you know emotions can blind you yeah everyone makes dumb decisions sometimes and can get like blinded to like what is happening so I really enjoyed this movie. I liked that it was kind of like an exploration of her, like, kind of, like, taking her own power back. But Mm -hmm. not in a, like, 
sometimes I feel like when movies try to do that, when they try to go like rah rah girl power, I find it like so much that I'm like, okay, I get it. You know, like I get, I get it. You don't have to like keep saying it. You know. Yeah, and I like that it wasn't pushing, stepping down on men. It did a little bit of that, but I like that Jared Leto wasn't even in the movie. He mm-hmm. wasn't important. It was no all flashbacks like, even. No flashbacks even, and I thought that was a good thing because I feel like it centered it around her. Yeah, it centered around her and her feelings rather than like putting him down or whatever. It was about her being like, okay, I don't have the protection of this man that was in my life. How am I going to get past it? Mm -hmm. Also, Ewan McGregor is fabulous in this movie. I know. He was so good at being evil that I started being attracted to him, and I was like, don't. Yeah. This person is the worst. I was like, oh, no. My body was like, maybe, though. He's wearing eyeliner. I was like, he is. I loved the violence in this movie. I felt like it was really, like, genuinely fun to watch, and... It was cathartic. Yeah, cathartic, and, like, the fight scenes are well choreographed. I mean, like, I'm not an expert, but they looked great to me. Um, There were a couple, like, specific like, little touches that I found, like, I don't want to give any spoilers, but, like, little touches that I was like, ah, I like that a lot. Yeah, and a lot of uh, comic book movies, everyone's like, oh, we don't kill because we're good people. And I kept forgetting that we were technically watching a villain movie. Mm -hmm. And I was like, she, oh, yeah, no, she kills people. Duh. Like, yeah. (laughs) Um, I also like that it didn't take itself too seriously. Like, this movie definitely has a sense of humor. Mm -hmm. I really liked that. Um, Because I... I don't know. I feel like sometimes the superhero movies, like... Which is why I enjoyed, like, um, uh, Thor Ragnarok, the third one. It's a fun movie. It's a fun movie, right? And, like, serious things are happening and, like, whatever. But there's also, like, a fair amount of jokes and, like... I don't know. I like that approach, and it, obviously that doesn't work for every superhero, but here I think that it was the right decision. So, yeah. Well, that so we, we loved it. We recommend it. Yep. Um. So at the BAFTA Awards, which is the what is it? The British Academy Game Awards. Um, or is it the? British Academy yeah, Film Film and Game Awards or British some, Academy Game Awards. Oh, British Academy of Film and Television Arts. That's I was looking for the BAFTA, like what does it actually stand for? But basically, it's like the British like Game Awards. Um, they they the Control and Death Stranding were nominated in eleven categories each, which is the most ever in the awards sixteen year history. Which, uh, I guess the main reason that I wanted to mention that is because those were. If you haven't watched our playthroughs for those, those are bo- were both really fun. Mari did a great job editing our Death Stranding streams down to, like, manageable content for YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> um, Control was really fun. Uh, it has a lot of, like, Lovecraftian, without the racism <laughs> elements. Um, and I think... I didn't know too much about that game going into it, but I'm so glad that we played it. Yeah, it was... It was fun and interesting. Mm-hmm. And just an interesting and, like, a lot of good lore. If you're into lore and reading codexes and stuff, this will be your jam. Yeah, and we went through a lot of that stuff, too. And, like, I just feel like we had a lot of, like, good discussions on that about, like, what's this? Like, what's happening? Mm-hmm. So if that's, like, your type of thing, I feel like you'd enjoy it. Um, there's going to be a remaster of the classic Blade Runner adventure game from 1997 that is coming to PC and consoles later this year. So I didn't play this because I was... A child? A child. Um, I did play games, like, when I was that age, but definitely not on this level. (laughs) Um, but, uh, this, um, I don't know, it seems like it would be really cool. I kind of love the... In, in similar themes to us enjoying playing 90s games that are now making their way onto Steam, including Tender Love and Care, which we yeah. just finished. Yeah. Um, what the fuck? <laughs> that was so <laughs> weird. Okay, so apparently there's three endings. Yeah, somebody said But me- everything else leading up to it is the same. So we technically... 
did not do it. We only changed the journal the, the entries. journals and stuff. So there's three endings. Spoilers. Let's just tell them because uh, I'm sure most people have watched it by now. Tell them the ending. I mean, if you want. No, the three endings. Oh. Do you want to? No, nah, let's just not. No. You can look it up. But they're all equally awesome. Bad. Yeah. God, what? <laughs> so, yeah. I'm so weird. I haven't watched the other two endings yet, so I still have to set aside some time to take a look at that. But man, I. That is a game where we went from like being on one person's side in the beginning to like totally changing our minds by the end of it and just being like, wait, never mind. Like, oh my God, are you okay? <laughs> what have we done? <laughs> Uh, yeah, God, those FMV games are so much fun. They just go places. What's really, so there was a person I saw that commented on our videos who was like, who was like, you know, oh, I, you know, they were like in their forties and they were like, as somebody who played this, like when it came out, like it is so funny to see people like now being subjected to the horrors of playing this. Oh my God. I just, who made, who made it? Because it, it's clearly made with, like, a lot of care. Like, they didn't genuinely There's care. There's a lot of things that happen, like. I feel like the, the writing was pretty good. Well, and it's not even that, like, we're not saying, like, oh, my God, as in, like, the game is, like, poorly made. It's, like, of its time, clearly. But, like, they I think it was made pretty well. They shoot. They shot a lot of scenes. There's like a very fleshed out story. I mm -hmm. mean, we played it for what, like six or eight hours or something. Mm -hmm. Um. So it's not like the, It's not like this is like an Xbox 360 like sh shitty look. Like this is an actual thing. Yeah, and all it's the just... character motivations were good. The 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 game design was pretty good. All the psychological stuff was pretty good. It was a really interesting, and I would say it's a good game. It's just batshit crazy. Yeah, it's absolutely nuts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are rumors that, uh, so Norman Reedus says he's talking to Kojima about quote-unquote other stuff amid Silent Hill rumors. Yeah, there's been a few tweets from mm -hmm. Kojima production people being like, wow, wouldn't it be great if like this hill was quiet? And you're like, yeah, yeah. okay. If this hill was silent, you mean? <laughs> It's just like out of different words, you know. Look oh, at this yeah. mound of quiet dirt, and you're like, "Dude, what are you doing?" Yeah. So, uh, Rita's basically said, you know. So, for those oh, man, Silent Hills that was back from 2014. Seriously? No, I don't know. Wow. I don't okay. think I think that was a concept trailer. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, Silent Hills was like a project that Kojima was working on with Norman Reedus and like, um. A bunch of other people way forever ago it feels like now and like that's when they had like PT and then you know at the end of P there which PT was that short like playable creepy demo type thing and then at the very end they had the kind of like turn to camera like and then there's gonna be Silent Hills and everyone went nuts and then what Konami didn't give him the rights is that what it was or like uh, no, Konami just shut it down, and then that was right when Kojima got fired, basically. Yeah. It's that they wouldn't, it's not that they wouldn't give him the rights, they just decided to fire him for whatever reason, Yakuza reason that they had, <laughs> and then try to destroy his entire career, and then Sony was like, come over here, we'll help you. Yeah. We'll get you out. Come on. Yeah. Quick. So, but... Yeah, there's been kind of, like, vague tweets and whisperings of possible Silent Hill continuations, Norman Reedus stuff, um, so nothing official, but I think everyone's kind of, like, like, waiting to see. Dude, I feel like he would do a good job. He probably wouldn't do a good job with the lore of it, but he would do a good job with just the vibe of it. Mm -hmm. I think. Just vibing? I know a lot of people are really strict about the lore, and I and I am also a believer in only using the lore from the first three games if you want to have a cohesive narrative. Mm -hmm. um, and I think in Death Stranding, you can definitely, definitely see the influences of it because everybody's beach was different, and in Silent Hill, everybody's Silent Hill was different. Mm -hmm. And there was, like, a lot of influences of it. 
So I'm really interested to see him doing a full-on horror game, mm-hmm. a survival horror game. Because The Stranding was, in essence, it didn't feel like a horror game, but it was. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm interested to see the, the fear and stuff that he does with that. Mm-hmm. It's very cool, very cool. Um, we also recently played the Final Fantasy VII Remake demo, which is, like, the first mission from the very beginning of the game. So if you're the type of person who, like, has played part of the game or you don't want spoilers for, like, any other stuff, like, it really is just that, like, very first mission. So you can safely watch it and you're not going to get, like, you know... I mean, if you don't want any information about it whatsoever then don't watch it or play it, but, like, it doesn't give anything away for, like, later in the game, I guess is what I'm saying. For what? The Final Fantasy demo? The demo, yeah. Because there were some people that said, I don't want to watch it in case it spoils things, but, like, I'm saying, like, it literally is just that beginning segment. And it doesn't change anything from the base game to this. I know some people were like, oh, they changed it. They didn't actually change it because they were just making that part of the thing more clear because they were trying to depict that same idea in the original game. It's just that they had a harder right. time depicting it with the graphics they had. Yeah, it's just a little... They were a little limited at the time. Yeah, they was more limited at the time, so they made it more clear about what was happening mm-hmm. in that scene. So, yeah. Yep. So I think um, that'll probably about do it for today. Unless yeah. there's anything else you want to talk about? We're going to try and do more content for everyone who is stuck home. Stacy is stuck home now. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to say Chicago's going to be I know um, that like a lot shut of down soon. Yeah, I mean a lot of schools are closing, which I think you know, a lot of schools are closing, a lot of people are working from home. Um so you know, I, like we said at the beginning of the podcast like Good vibes to all of you. Take care of yourself however you can. Mm-hmm. You know, do your best. I know that it's it can be difficult to, like, make allowances with some of the, like, financial situations that people have going on. So just, like, be nice to each other and help each other if you can. Yeah. Um, goodbye, everybody. Wait, don't you want to do the social media promos? Oh, yeah. You. Oh, do you mean... <laughs> Do you mean your new business my, venture? My new business venture, yes. Stacy's. I'm jealous of her success adventure. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, for people who don't already know, um, I started an OnlyFans, which is basically, you can't open it. Oh, I thought you were going to open it, and I was like, don't do that. Yeah, so for people who don't already know, um, I started up an OnlyFans, which is basically because, yeah, there it is, OnlyFans.com slash Geek Remix Lot, which is I can open it, it's just not going to show me. I'm not subscribed. (laughs) Okay. Wait, I'm not going to subscribe to your vagina, I'm sorry. No, I know. My vagina's not on it. So far. Okay, so (laughs) basically I created it because um, I have a lot of, like, like modeling photos and stuff that are... um, basically how I've been referring to it is like too spicy for my friends and family on Instagram like I love posting like you sexy know, sexy photos but I was like I know that my family and my friends don't really want to see that and so this is like a separate place where I can put them I also actually have a lot of like older like art modeling photos that like now I can actually post them somewhere because yeah um, um, it's a subscription it is a subscription um, but have you always dreamed about Stacy stepping on you? Now's the time. Yes, now's the time. Um, and I basically just made it subscription so that I can post whatever I want on there. And it's like, you know, I, I don't have to worry about people seeing things that they didn't like specifically opt in to seeing, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So yeah. Um, yeah. But otherwise, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, uh, at Geek Remix a lot. And you can find me at Geek Remix. I don't have an OnlyFans. It's only Stacy does. <laughs> I don't know why everyone... People keep thinking it's, it's both of us. I'm like, it's not. No, we are definitely not doing that together. <laughs> oh my god. It's not. <laughs> it's not. We're doing it separately. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, <laughs> and then... Um, 
Yeah. And you can also check out, if you want, like, other, like, types of spicy content, you can also find the Pixel Squirt podcast, which is on Pornhub. You can watch the video version, which is for the brave only. You can uh, also... There's the audio version on Spotify and all podcast apps. Mm-hmm. So you can find it on Spotify now. I know people are asking for it, so it's there now. Yep. I'm working on making the audio better, just because... Uh, no particular reason, just decided to. Um, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, we'll try to get more content out to you all so that you have something to do while you're stuck. Oh, yeah, Pixel Squirt, look up Geek Remix Podcast, not Pixel Squirt. So look up Geek Remix Podcast, and you will find it in all of your podcast ways. Yep. So, goodbye. Bye.